Well, hello everyone, welcome to the speed build for the Venezuelan Red Howler Monkey. I hope you're all well, and um, we're just getting stuck straight in. Uh, speed builds aren't really my thing, so I do apologise. I also had a bit of trouble building this. Um, I don't know if it's because I'm using the free build mod, um, but it's, it's a bit janky in a couple of places. I have real trouble getting the floor and the roof um, sort of in place, but nonetheless, here we are. Um, so yeah, building it out of bamboo, I just felt it fit the theme a bit better. Um, and obviously the habitat is inspired by uh, the Red Howler Monkey habitat at Yorkshire Wildlife Park, which I've been to a few times, and the Red Howler Monkeys are always rather active in that habitat, so I figured why not recreate it? As is usual with me recreating things. Um, it's slightly bigger than it is in reality, but at the same time, I'm not going for a one-to-one -one recreation. It's just inspired by, heavily inspired by, but um, <laughs> nevertheless, there we are. So I finally got the floor in, um, having to use free build just to flatten some of that out. And that won't flatten out because the water's too near it. That's not a problem. It doesn't bother me too much. So the mod is the Colombian Red Howler Monkey mod, I think, by Lee. Um, but I know them as Venezuelan Red Howler Monkeys. Uh, the name is interchangeable, it's the same species, but just what we're dealing with. So then over here, I'm just getting the fence put in place as best as possible. Um, it's a little bit janky in a couple of places, but you can't really tell when everything's finished, so I'm not too fussed by that really. Uh, but yeah, I wanted something that they couldn't climb, which is obviously why we've gone for this electric-y looking fence. Uh, but I wanted something that was open at the same time too, which I think I've managed to achieve here. It doesn't need to be a particularly high fence, uh, red howler monkeys don't spend a lot of time on the ground. They're primarily an arboreal species, so they spend the majority of their time in the tree canopy. They are least concern. Uh, they are at risk. I think most species are at risk these days, but they are least concern uh, because the population's stable. It's just the threats to the population was a bit of an issue. Um, and although I've put them in the, the Pantanal, <laughs> they're not actually found in the Pantanal, which is a bit awkward, but it just felt right to put them here. Um, I do apologise, I've got an email. It's nothing particularly interesting, it's just the new Jurassic World Evolution 2 DLC. Not a fan of that game. Liked the first one, felt it was lacking a little bit. Excited for the second one, got it. Very disappointed. It's just the same game. <laughs> anyway, I digress. So this front wall, I'm doing something a bit different here. So we're using bamboo again, and you can see I'm having real issues getting things to line up. It has to be something to do with the free build mod, but um, whatever, I'm just glad we have it. So I'm going for this sort of stacked bamboo look and we are going to cut part of it out and do little viewing, they're not windows, I don't know what you'd call them, viewing opportunities. <laughs> uh, again you can see we have the drainage pipe for the connected wetlands. It does stick out at the back, but nobody's going to see that, so shh. <laughs> so, red howler monkeys are uh, dinural. They're most active in the mornings when they're looking for food, and on the evenings. Other than that, they're not a particularly active species of New World primate. <laughs> they prefer climbing as opposed to leaping, which is why there's this water boundary sort of between the, the guest viewing and the habitat and there you go you can see i've cut out one of the uh, viewing 
opportunities there. And we're doing the other one here. Um, the living groups are between three and nine individuals with a maximum of two males. We've got one male and three females and one of the females is pregnant. Um, so we are probably going to have a family group, I reckon, of nine. Um, or maybe a family group of seven, something like that. See here I'm working on the uh, interior, just putting that one-way glass in to give them some privacy. Here, putting some lovely finishing touches on this little viewing opportunity. And now, just checking how everything looks, and then we cut to this. This was a nightmare. Uh, getting the concrete in, I wanted concrete all the way around the path, but it just looked awful <laughs> on the ends, like here, um, and uh, on the curved bit as well. So I ended up putting stones, uh, the fur rocks, on the curved bit. In hindsight, I probably should have done a little bit more research because the one at Yorkshire Wildlife Park has a square end, uh, whereas I did a rounded end. But it's fine. Um, I kind of like the rounded end. Probably might go back and do a square end. <laughs> so just putting some trees in here, uh, making sure that wherever possible they're least likely to climb out even though they can't escape anyway in the game but we'll go for realism and stuff here and any sort of land border we just want to prevent the monkeys from walking over there just in case even though they're not likely to and then this here this actually turns out to be one of my favorite viewing spots of the habitat uh, so I'm just checking to see that the howler monkeys have navigable area. It doesn't show up that they can climb the trees, which is odd, even though they are climbable, as you can see. So I'm not sure what's going on there. And then we switch to the interior. So I've put some outside climbing in and a bit more uh, foliage, as you can see. And we're now continuing that outdoor climbing um, towards the house. It took about three days in total for the entire habitat. Um, partly because I didn't have a lot of time this week, uh, but also because speed builds really aren't my thing. It's a lot of pressure and I like to adapt my design as I'm going along and speed builds don't really fit that sort of method of building very well uh, which is why in the next one the marsh deer we're going back to my sort of look at what I've built <laughs> uh, the story elements will be coming back in as well um, the, the role play element will be coming back in I haven't forgotten about those so I put these platforms in because obviously the keepers would need to be able to shut off the indoor and outdoor areas in certain circumstances. Well, howler monkeys aren't a particularly vicious species of monkey. Um, I would think the keepers would go in with them with no problem, really. The only reason I would think that they might separate them would be for if there was any viruses or anything like that, any illness. That is the, the only reason I can think of. Um, the reason why howler monkeys are quite lazy is because their diet is not particularly high in energy, so they need to conserve whatever energy they can. So they spend a lot of the day lazing around, just chilling, really. Um, which is true. They avoid physical fights as well so again not a species the the keepers would particularly need to have concerns about where safety is concerned uh, we're going back to the indoor uh, uh, climbing structures now I lost where I was for a moment there. 
pretty much the same design as outside, but obviously inside. <laughs> um, there are two areas for the indoors. There's one what's on show for the guests and one that's off show for the guests. The Howler Monkeys can move freely between both areas as they please. Depends how much privacy they want, I suppose. So, interestingly, they have a very low sugar diet, the Howler Monkeys, but they're actually folivores, which isn't something I've come across very often. I've heard of it a couple of times, but when researching the, the Red Howler Monkeys, folivores, um, primarily it's like leaves and nuts, but they'll also eat small animals, fruits, flowers, seeds, um, and those types of things. Those foods have higher sugar, particularly fruit. So they mainly look at those food sources for uh, when they're growing, when they're transitioning from being young to being old. Uh, but leaves make up the, the prominent sort of diet for the red howler monkeys. Uh, they are polygonous red howler monkeys, so they won't just have one mate for their life. Uh, there is fierce sexual competition between males and females because of the unbalanced uh, ratio in groups. They generally only have a maximum of two males in a group, and that would be an alpha male and then a sub. It might even be his son. Uh, it, it really does depend on <laughs> the individual personality of the Howler Monkey. Um, more often than not, though, I would imagine that the males are kicked out of the group and made to go find another one. That's, that tends to be what happens in the wild. I'd imagine zoos would replicate that as well, to be fair. So I'm just checking the navigable area here for the Howler Monkeys, making sure they can navigate all of this. And then I was thinking about putting a mesh roof in here, but it, it doesn't really work out because of the curved corner. And we don't have any curved mesh pieces. I couldn't be bothered to do a curve. <laughs> and so we uh, just put a normal roof over the top of this. Uh, just putting some, some straw down, some bedding, and changing the colours of this little bridge. got a building palette and a, a planting palette over on the right there, which that's what you keep seeing me go to. But it's not how I build really, I just sort of go on the fly. I have a vision and then I put the pieces in as I go along. Um, really struggled putting this roof in. Um, again, it's got a bit of free build mode. It, every time it just keeps putting it back down to ground level and it was really annoying. I was tempted to stop the recording and just be like, you're getting what you're getting. <laughs> but I persevered. The main threats to the Red Howler Monkey are habitat loss, poaching, the illegal pet trade, and disease from domesticated animals. Um, so things like uh, farming, livestock, and... Surprisingly, people releasing domesticated animals into the wild, which is very irresponsible. So we've got them to sort of highlight the, the plight that they face. And just in case, you know, their status does change from least concern, there is a population in captivity already that's ready to step in and bolster the wild populations, which is what all good zoos and wildlife parks should be about. Education and conservation. I'm just checking everything out again. You can see I've put the side fences in now. Welcome to the live section, everyone. Um, I don't know what I've just talked about. I haven't done the, uh, the voiceover for the speed build yet. Uh, I've just done the speed build and then here we are. Uh, speed builds aren't really my thing. I've probably... I'll probably mention that 
um, again in the speed build commentary. But uh, yeah, speed builds aren't really my thing. I I don't function well under speed build pressures. Uh, nevertheless, I've managed to complete a habitat that I am happy with. So we're starting uh, near the Andean Bears, the Inca Eats restaurant, and the back of the uh, Pantanal pool. And obviously there's no secrets needed. The uh, Venezuelan red howler monkey, or the Colombian red howler monkey, it's the same species. The name is just interchangeable between Colombian or Venezuelan. Um, I know them as, oh no, what, what's, what's happened here? <laughs> I know them as the Venezuelan red howler monkeys, so that is what I will call them. Of course, we have Inca Eats. I showed you that in the tour, I believe, but this is all new. So, obviously, you'll have seen in the speed build that I put the decorative fencing in. This is now walled off. The conservation station might be going in here. Although the footprint does look a little bit small, you can see it's uh, it's not particularly large. So if it doesn't fit in here, which I strongly suspect it isn't, um, I have got another place in mind for the conservation station. Um, but yeah, this is all planted in now. And unless you are tall enough to sort of see through the little gaps in the bushes you wouldn't really know there was a habitat back here until you got to this section I'd reckon where you can actually see the howler monkeys education and indoor uh, accommodation and stuff like that but yes I, I really like how it's still South American themed but the planting here is very much not South America, <laughs> so <laughs> I like that. But yeah, we're going to take this little trail here. And I didn't want you to get any early views of the Howler Monkeys until you sort of reach the end of this path, which I think I've managed to achieve, thankfully. There's Frank, just over there. So your first viewing opportunity is here. And we can actually see there's a howler monkey foraging around for food over there. Can we see any others? Not at the moment. Not a problem. But yeah, again, the water is connected to the Pantanal pool water through these tubes, highlighting the importance of water conservation and wetland habitats. Eventually I went for this design, just following the uh, bamboo sort of around and up here. This is based off a red howler monkey habitat at Yorkshire Wildlife Park. Um, however, <laughs> upon lying in bed the night before recording this, I realised that it's not actually rounded at Yorkshire Wildlife Park. It is a s sort of square. So perhaps I might come back and do that simply because, and I'll show you when we explore the habitat a little bit, because I don't think I captured it in the speed build. Because of the angle of the path, I can't get the concrete pieces in here without it looking ridiculous. So I've just had to sort of stone it off. But I don't like it. <laughs> you can't see it. Not really. But, uh, yeah, I'm not a huge fan of how it looks. But we have got one howler monkey here. And two there. There should be a another one somewhere. And one of them is actually already pregnant. So, that's great. Even though the howler monkeys are least concerned. Then we've got the uh, done, uh, conservation education and 
bit difficult to see because of the angle of the sun. But red howler monkey donation box. Uh, although this species is currently listed as least concern, their habitat is very much at risk. With your help, we can preserve the rainforest and ensure this species and many others will still have somewhere to call home. And that is 100% true. The red howler monkeys are least concern. There are populations in the western Amazon basin, in Venezuela, Ecuador, Peru, Colombia and Brazil. There is a separate species called the Bolivian red howler monkey. But there isn't a mod for them, so <laughs> they're, not, they're not here. Uh, but yeah, their habitat is very much at risk and that's what's threatening them the most at the moment. And then we get to the next viewing opportunity, which is here. This one's, I really like this viewing opportunity actually, the way it's framed. That, that might be the thumbnail, I think. I, I really like it. I'm getting all giddy. <laughs> and then we get the house, which I'm not a massive fan of the roof, but you can't see it from down here. Not really, so I'm not too bothered particularly but then of course you can get very close to these windows and view the howlers inside and there's just some straw on here on the floor um, sleeping platforms I do need to adjust that actually let's pop ahead pop in and do that now <laughs> uh, we want to do this and select that and there we go. That better? That looks better, doesn't it? Ignore my notifications for greater year is about to mature. <laughs> and the same back here, you know, we've got uh, population fragmentation. And then the donation again. I didn't want to fence this off because it's not going to be fenced off at the other side. So only the middle is fenced off. There's Frank there. Ah, while we're here. You see what I mean about stoning it off? So it's concrete. And then I've had to use the fur rocks to sort of stone it off. Yeah, I'm just I don't like it. I'm a perfectionist. What can I say? And that brings us to the main path again. Um, so this is like wildflowers and bushes and stuff. Very much more of a, a wildlife habitat. Whereas the planting inside this area was very much blocking the view. This one's more animals need this to live. We've even got a little planting pocket here, which I quite like. <laughs> Just managed to sneak one in. Uh, and then this planting down here, this is all new as well. Uh, just for some privacy, really. You know, you, this green box here is going to be the monorail station. Um, ignore my home phone ringing, if you can hear that. <laughs> the monorail station is going to be here. So you would disembark. Going to have some shops, I think, on the left. And then you've got the Andean bears down there. And just put a little pond in here because I felt it was quite nice. <laughs> I really like how it's all turned out for a change. Um, I need to put a barrier in here um, so the guests can't walk and have a look at the weirdly grassy flawed um, keeper hut. But yeah, this is all, all new. So yeah, the only time, so you can see there, like, Inca eats. And that's kind of what I want. You know, if you step off the monorail, you look for the direction. Oh, it's in this direction, but where is it? La, 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 la. Oh, I found it. There it is. And that's how you'd, you'd find it, essentially. Unless you're blind, in which case you'd probably need some assistance in locating the restaurant um, and you know it's the same planning but you just got a hedge at this side 
just a little bit more secluded and shaded and diffusing some of that hustle and bustle that noise um, might move some of these benches around so we can get some parasols on all of them rather than just a few because some of them are sort of in direct sunlight and others like this one for example um, half the bench is sort of usable same story here but that has a parasol so yeah but that's essentially the red howler monkey habitat so I wanted it to be bigger than the require because they don't require an awful lot of room red howler monkeys they're not particularly mobile for a, a primate species um, so they only need 234 land area and 32 climbing area I've given them way more I mean let's just 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 14. I've given them nearly 10 times more than they actually need in terms of space. But I don't mind because this looks like an adequate sized habitat for red howler monkeys, if that makes sense. I mean, they're usually found in groups of up to nine. So uh, we've only got four in total. We've got one male and three females um, all of them are rescued none of them are part of the breeding program so it was really important that we provided them a home where they can breed and contribute to the breeding program in that regard uh, we will need names for them if you're interested uh, please leave your suggestions down below because I am not saying these every single time we talk about the red howler monkeys so we need three female names and one male name preferably um, I'd like them to be themed so for example uh, you could have Elmo, Care Mate, Big Bad and Miss Piggy and there you have your theming that they're all puppets um, or you could have what's another one uh, Maggie Carol Daryl and Michonne and the, the common theme there is that they're walking dead characters so that kind of thing is what I'm looking for because this is just I, I, I can't I'm not going to attempt to pronounce those names but yeah so they're doing fine they, they have everything they need and we're gonna hit play i'm gonna watch them do their thing from here is that the other one just yeah the other one's back there so there was two here there's one back there and then there was one here who's just now over there see if I can get any better <laughs> better viewing opportunities the habitat does bend around the back which is something I didn't show you so we'll just go and explore that quickly are there any of them in this section no <laughs> of course not so we have staff only no entry the staff. What's happening there? No idea. No staff only, no entry. And then, I don't know why I've bothered because you can't see it, but there's an implied entry there, but the actual entry to the habitat is here. And then back here, they just have some more long grass, a, a cardboard box enrichment the water sprinkler enrichment and a ball and then the implied entrance is the behind the scenes uh, area for the howler monkeys 
So if they don't want to be on show or for whatever reason we have to separate some of them, then they can be shut off in here. And the others have this guest facing access. So yeah, here's one. Doing his calls or hair calls. I've had to tell what, what it is, probably a woman. It is a woman. This is the one that's pregnant. Uh, they are, of course, based on the capuchin in the game, uh, which is unfortunate because red howler monkeys don't really spend any time on the ground at all. Um, what are you doing? Okay. <laughs> so, we'll just have to deal with that. Either way, it's nice to actually have them in the game. So, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed. Um, I'm certainly very happy with how this habitat turned out. My only concern, well, not concerns, my only things I'm not happy about is having to stone the front instead of concrete. It would have been nice to have the concrete, but I just can't do it without it looking utterly ridiculous. Um, and then maybe the lack of sort of shorter plants, I'd say. There's a lot of quite barren land in here, which I'm not happy about, but we can, we can deal with that. I will pause the game because <laughs> I made the mistake of, um, in fact, you know what, I'll just show you. Let's, uh... I'll show you. Where am I? Rears. Over here. I made the mistake of filling out the, the maximum numbers for the rear. So we had... What did we have? I think we had one... Yeah, we had one male and six females. And the rest have all been born here. Uh, very bad idea. I've had nothing but rear babies left, right and centre. <laughs> it's been a bit of a nuisance, actually. So we will just get the rest of our to rears or box them up and the coates i applied contraceptive to them so they can't have any more babies but we've got a family group of coates and then what we'll do is we shall release them to the wild Right, now I will take you back to the uh, Howler Monkeys, which are of course just back here. And pop myself in there. Yeah, so I'm, I am really happy with how this habitat turned out. It took, in total, adding it all up, little bits here and there, it took about three days to do this. I don't work well under speed build conditions, so that's why it took three days. Um, hopefully you like it too. Uh, please leave your comments in the comment section below. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Please remember to like the video if you have indeed liked it and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. It does really help me out and it helps the channel to grow, which is always a good thing. Uh, the next episode then, don't think I'm going to do a speed build for that one. Um, I have an idea in mind, but I don't know how to bring it together. So I'd rather just work on the fly and do trial and error. And that doesn't really work for speed build sort of stuff. 
So the next one I'll probably just show you what I've done. And the next episode, I don't know when it will be, but it will be the Marsh Deer, which is quite a large habitat. It's just next door to the Howler Monkeys. It's here. So you can see it curves all the way back down here. And then the inside of the habitat is here to here. Now, of course, this footprint includes indoor accommodation as well. So the habitat itself might not be that big. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. Either way, thank you very much for watching. And I shall see you all in that next episode. Oh, look at this. We've got some howler monkeys having a drink. What a way to finish the episode. Thank you for watching. Stay safe. Stay kind. Remember to like and subscribe. You can find me on Instagram at JW underscore YT. And I shall see you all in that next video, my friends. Thank you very much. And bye-bye for now.